Hi and welcome to the video on power of a power and the zero index. By the end of this video you should be able to use the power of a power rule with indices and understand what the zero index is. So let's take a look at the power of a power rule. Remember that p to the power of 6 to the power of 3 means that you're going to take everything inside that bracket which is p to the power of 6 and you're going to times it by itself three times. So if I wanted to take a power to another power, here's what happens. That p to the power of 6 to the power of 3 means p to the power of 6 times p to the power of 6 times p to the power of 6. The multiplying law says that when I multiply indices with the same base, then I add the powers. I'm going to add 6 plus 6 plus 6. That gives me p to the power of 18. Now what do you notice about the powers in the question and the power in the answer? And If you said that if you multiplied 6 by 3 to get 18, you are absolutely correct. The rule is that if you have an index and it's brought to another index, that is a power, then we're going to multiply the indices together. In our example on the page, we've got 6 times 3 giving us 18. Let's take a look at the zero index. Remember some powers of 2. 2 to the power of 4 means 2 multiplied by itself 4 times, and that's 16. 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So following that pattern, what should 2 to the power of 0 be? Well, if you start with 16 and go to the next answer down, we're dividing by 2 to get 8. And then if we start at 8 and divide by 2, we get 4. Divide by 2, we get 2. So keeping that pattern, the last answer should be what 2 divided by 2 is, which is 1. So let's take a look at the powers of 3 and see if it's the same pattern. 3 to the power of 4 is going to be 81. 3 to the power of 3 is going to be 27. 3 to the power of 2 is going to be 9. And 3 to the power of 1 is just going to be 3. So what's 3 to the power of 0 going to be? Again, I'm going to look at the pattern. Starting at 81, if I divide by 3, I get 27. If I divide that by 3, I get 9. If I divide that by 3, I get 3. So showing the pattern, 3 divided by 3 also gives me 1. Notice how that both answers in both columns where the power of 0 gives the same exact answer of 1. That's the rule. Let's take a look at another way of looking at it where powers of 0 are going to equal 1 whole. Let's take the number 1. Now I can write the number 1 as a fraction where the top number and the bottom number are exactly the same. In fact, I can take any fraction where the top number and the bottom number are exactly the same and it will equal 1. So for this example, I'm going to use a to the power of 20. If I have a to the power of 20 divided by a to the power of 20, that answer is going to be 1. Because what I'm asking is how many times does this big number, a to the power of 20, whatever it is, how many times does it go into itself? And any number will go into itself once. Now if we can understand that, then our next step is to say to ourselves, all right, this fraction is a division. And the division law says that we're going to subtract the powers. That is, I'm going to do a to the power of 20 minus 20. And 20 to minus 20 is 0. Now what this shows is you can take any number to any power and divide it by itself. And when you follow the rule of subtracting the powers, you will always end up with whatever that number is to the power of 0. And that equals 1. So our rule is going to be anything to the power of 0 is 1. Now if it was that simple, if it was that easy, the subject wouldn't be mathematics. There's got to be more to it than that. So let's take a look at some examples. I'd like you to pause the video and see what you can come up with with these six questions. Some of them are tricky, and I'm trying to trick you, but by the end of this you'll have a good knowledge base to start the questions in your book. Did you pause it? Pause it now. Try it yourself. Okay. Let's go. So we're going to start off with question number one. m to the power of 15 to the power of 5. The rule is when we have a power of a power like that, we're going to multiply the powers together. That is 15 times 5, 75. That's the answer. That's as simplified as it gets, that is. Now the next one, 2p to the power of 7 to the power of 3, here's the interesting part. That 2, the coefficient, has to be brought to the power of 3. Now 2 to the power of 3 is going to be 8. But let's see why it's 8. I'm going to be multiplying everything inside that bracket by itself three times. That is 2p to the power of 7 times 2p to the power of 7 times 2p to the power of 7. Now when I multiply all those coefficients together, 2 times 2 times 2, I get 8. And when I add all those powers together, the 7 plus 7 plus 7, I get 21. Now I could have gone straight to this answer by saying 2 to the power of 3 is 8 
and p to the power of 7 to the power of 3, 7 times 3, is 21. I don't need to write out this middle step. So if you can do it in one step, all the better for you. All right, let's look at number 3 now, k to the power of 0. Anything brought to a power of 0 is going to be 1. So k to the power of 0 is 1. But for question number 4, we have 3k to the power of 0. That is 3 times k to the power of 0. That 0 is only being applied to the k. So really what I'm asking you is, what's 3 times 1? And the answer to that is 3. Look, a common answer for number 4, for that question 4, is 1 because you think, oh, the rule is power of 0 has to be 1, it's always going to be 1. But realize how these numbers are set up and that when you have a number in front of a letter, it means take the number and times it by the letter. Number 5 is a little different though. Notice how there's a bracket here and there's no bracket here. This bracket means that everything inside this bracket is being brought to a power of 0. And everything brought to a power of 0 is going to be 1. We'll finish off with question number 6. Now question number 6 has 4k to the power of 0. That is 4 times 1. This part, 4k all to the power of 0, means that this is going to be 1. We're going to add one more on. So 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. And those are your six examples. Pause and summarize the examples. Get the notes down on the right-hand side. And that should be it. Hopefully now you know how to use the power of a power rule with indices, and you also understand the zero index. Good luck.